regret anything that you've written? Yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah. But That's, you go on doing it. You know, I, I always think the job of a journalist is unless when you press, you know, whenever, whenever I press send, I literally almost have a nervous breakdown. And I think, oh dear God, and the fallout is going to be this, and that person will never talk to me, and so there is that level of sort of, you know you're going to set off this sort of bomb amongst various people. But I think writing should be difficult and hard and have consequences. If it's easy and there are no consequences and there's no revelation, none of it's difficult, then it's just a press release, I think. Some people would say that that is a sign of a kind of lack of empathy, really, that you are not able to put yourself in the place of the people that you're writing about, like your neighbours in your village in Exmoor who um, hated you for what you wrote about them. Do you think that's fair? Well, I never actually wrote about anyone specific. It was a general area. Um, and I always try and do it with a bit of humour. But what I got back was stuff written or told to the papers at, about me, specifically. Was I was more general. They were actually much more specific. There was a big crisis in my family when my dad died. Huge, huge thing. And no one told me because they were about right about it. The important point I wanted to make was that, having done this for such a long time, is it does sort of put your life in this sort of weird prison. Whereas in a way, you don't sort of feel it in the same way that you would if you weren't writing about it. So when awful things happen to you, there's sort of quite a big bit of me that thinks that's great, you know, I'm now got next week's column and I've got the one after that and stuff. You know, and that's happened so many times to me now, like when you discover your husband's cheating, and there's a big bit of your journalistic brain thinking, that's great. I can do that. I've got too hard to... So I'm just, I think it makes you a slightly heartless, nastier person. It's as almost as if you don't feel things anymore, but it makes you seem sometimes sort of quite cold and distant and mercenary because you know you'll be having an argument with someone and I've actually been typing during an argument what someone's been shouting at me or, or you know so it, it can make you quite unemotional because it's your job and I know I've made decisions purely on the basis that it would be so chaotic and mad that I'd get some good copy out of it well, given that you say you don't have relationships and that you've made bad decisions in order to get copy, um, is, it really, is it worth it? No, it's definitely not worth it. No. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Why do you do it? Uh, well, it's a job, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> you know, why is... At what cost? Though? Why does someone, I don't know, go into the office every day? It's sort of... I don't know, I was sort of... I started writing about myself on Millennium Eve, which was, you know, 1999, not having a date. And, yeah, if I could turn the clock back and could go back before then and do my job, which was editing and being in the back room, really, I, I definitely would, because it absolutely... I'm an all or nothing person. I won't do a column and which lots of people do, not mention that my husband's got liver cancer or not mention that my husband ran off with another man. Um, I think if you take the money for doing a column, you have to literally spill your guts. So I, you know, I don't really hold back. And because I don't really hold back and leave out stuff, um, it's to, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've had to move house because I get people turning up at my house. I just came downstairs the other day and said, this woman was in my hallway. And it's, it's just awful. No, I wouldn't do it again. Absolutely not.